These teachers are mad because their state wants to cut their retirement benefit. This conflict's about to hit most states. The problem is that the money hasn't been set aside for years and years and years. City Journal contributing editor Daniel DeSalva points out that unsustainable retirement promises now total trillions of dollars. But nobody cares. Nobody was paying attention. There's very little sense of urgency. City Journal editor Steve Malanga struggles to get the media to pay attention. To a certain extent, I have sympathy with the media because basically the media is looking for like, what happens next, right? What's Trump going to say next or what's he's going to tweet next? This is not something that's going to happen next week or next month. This is going to be a big deal. A lot of people are going to be hurt. We just don't have enough money and the amount of money that we have to put into this is just mountainous. How did this happen? Both parties, Democrats and Republicans, have incentives to short the pension fund. For Democrats, if we can not put as much in, we can free up more money for greater public spending on public programs that we think are good. If we're Republicans, we probably want to, say, cut taxes. Both are much more popular in terms of getting reelected than putting money in a savings account. You betcha. Five years from now, 10 years from now, they're going to have a problem. But 10 years from now, somebody else is in office. The retirees, they put in their share. Where's the city share? They were promised this, and now you know, you're 73 years old, uh, and all of a sudden someone's going to say, well, your monthly income is going to fall by 10% or 50%. They can't just stiff the retirees. Well, they, they have a contract. They, they can if they go into bankruptcy. San Bernardino recently became the third California city to file bankruptcy. Several California cities have declared bankruptcy. So did Detroit. At some point, your debts are so great that you can't afford to provide basic services to people. Police force, fire protection, all of these uh, services will be on the chopping block. No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! The problem with our pension systems isn't the system. Stephen Kreisberg of the biggest government workers union says unions didn't create this problem. Unions say, you may not cut our pensions. It's in the contract, we're entitled to this. Where's the money gonna come from? Taxpayers, there isn't enough money in the world to pay your people. Well, that's not true. There's plenty of money to pay our people. Five trillion dollar unfunded liability. That's a figure that's used by some anti-pension zealots, as our president might call it, it's fake news. If we apply the standards that the federal government demands that private sector pensions use, this is the number we come up with, $5 trillion. The money isn't there, and you guys won't budge an inch. That's not true at all. I personally worked in the city of Detroit, where we budged many inches. Let me be blunt, Detroit's broke. When Detroit went bankrupt, unions did agree to reduce workers' benefits. Detroit's a case where the unions finally gave in because the federal bankruptcy judge uh, created a precedent that said pensions could actually be cut. That was a shock to the unions, and in some sense that's been a new and interesting precedent that's called into question these strong legal pr uh, protections that public pensions have so long enjoyed. They can't just sit back and say, well, we're going to get paid no matter what. And yet, even today, when we know pensions are underfunded, Politicians still shortchange contributions. To make things even worse, some increase benefits. In California in 1999, the unions helped elect Gray Davis. Governor Davis then gave them bigger pensions. The state of California offers some of the best employment benefits like a CalPERS retirement pension plan. The legislators were told, listen, it's not going to cost the taxpayer anything. The stock market can pay for this. That's just wishful thinking. It's well, irresponsible. I would say it's more than wishful thinking. It borders on criminality, frankly. If after nine years of a bull market, we haven't begun to fix this, when are we going to fix it? And the unions are not doing this. These pension plans are adopted by statute, okay? The union votes for the politicians who vote in a great pension. So you don't like democracy. Public employee unions regularly lobby and seek to elect politicians who are going to offer them better compensation packages. They've been intimately involved in the whole system from the beginning. And the unions have disproportionate political power. How do we have disproportionate political power when public employees are less than 10% of the population? You get out the vote. If we were able to get out the vote so well, there'd be somebody different in the White House right now. The union says, 
This was a promise, a contract. You can't just take it away. The unions in the public sector have a much broader concept of what a promise is than everybody else. But it was a promise. No, it's not a promise. I mean, you could, that's the, the politicians promised it. They said, here's what you could expect. So if I go to work for a company, right, and they give me a salary, the idea that I could always expect to make that salary, that's, that five years from now, if there's a recession, that my company couldn't say to me, sorry, we're gonna have to cut your salary. That's crazy, nobody believes that. What's the solution? Reduce the level of benefits and go to individual accounts. Like 401ks, what most people in the private sector have. So instead of just a government promise, there's an actual account with money in it. I can see it, I can see how it's doing in, in the market. Unions generally oppose 401ks. However, AFSCME now does say their members may have to take a cut. That's what's happened. That's the facts, really? John. I thought that you argue we should not have to take a penny less. You argue that in courts. Well, we argue as a matter of legal right, depending upon where we are. If you've earned something, that was part of the deal. If you want to say, look, you're going to have to get a little bit less going forward, sometimes we'll fight over that. You see arguments, you see battles. There are winners and losers in every battle. Look at us, people. You could be next. Politicians and union bosses better pay attention because one day, no matter what the promise, they simply won't be able to keep it. Hands off the